Ohio is executing an infrastructure resurgence that few American states can match. While coastal cities dominate headlines, the Rust Belt heartland is quietly deploying tens of billions in strategic investments that are redefining what post-industrial comeback looks like. We're talking about semiconductor fabs that will produce more chips than any American facility in decades, a bridge project designed to untangle one of the nation's most notorious traffic bottlenecks and urban districts rising from riverfront voids that have plagued cities for generations. From Cincinnati's reinvented convention corridor to Columbus's transformation of a peninsula that was literally cut off from downtown by Interstate 70, these aren't incremental repairs. They're declarations that Ohio intends to reclaim its position as the economic engine of the Midwest. And the project topping this list isn't just a stadium renovation, it's a complete reimagining of Cleveland's lakefront that could finally unlock the waterfront potential the city has squandered for over a century, proving that even the most downtrodden industrial cities can build world-class sports infrastructure when they stop accepting mediocrity. Number 5. Brent Spence Companion Bridge in 2025, downtown Cincinnati's I-71, I-75 intersection, just north of the BSB, was ranked as the eighth most congested area in the nation for truck bottlenecks. For 60 years, the Brent Spence Bridge has been a bottleneck strangling commerce between Ohio and Kentucky, a 1963-era double-decker carrying traffic volumes it was never designed to handle. A new $3.6 billion companion bridge is under design and fully funded, marking one of the most significant transportation transformations in American infrastructure. The selected design is a cable-stayed independent deck bridge. Instead of using a traditional steel truss to support the bridge's lower deck, both decks will be supported by a cabling system used in other modern bridges, such as Louisville's Abraham Lincoln Bridge or Toledo's Veterans Glass City Skyway. No steelwork will connect the two decks. This design creates an unobstructed view of the Cincinnati skyline from northbound lanes, a dramatic departure from traditional double-deck bridges. According to Arnold's presentation, ODOT estimates the entire project will take 6 million work hours, 95 million pounds of steel, 700 estimated trade workers, more than 60 subcontractors, and more than 220 events completed. Drivers taking short trips between Ohio and Kentucky can use the Brent Spence Bridge. Those traveling farther will be directed toward the new span, finally separating local traffic from interstate freight. Groundbreaking is anticipated for late 2025, with construction expected to take eight years to complete. According to this timeline, the new bridge and reconfigured Brent Spence Bridge will open for traffic in 2032. The project also includes four refinements in Ohio freeing up 11 acres currently occupied by highway, extending the street grid to reconnect Queensgate with downtown Cincinnati. When the Brent Spence Companion Bridge opens, it won't just relieve congestion, it will prove that even America's most gridlocked corridors can be untangled through patient engineering and bipartisan cooperation, ending six decades of frustration for millions of drivers who have endured one of the nation's most notorious bottlenecks. Number 4. Intel Silicon Heartland Fabs on January 21st, 2022, Intel announced that it had selected the Licking County portion of the New Albany International Business Park as the location for its $20 billion investment in two state-of-the-art semiconductor manufacturing plants. In March 2024, Intel increased the investment amount to $28 billion. This isn't just another factory. It's the largest single private sector investment in Ohio history designed to establish the Midwest as America's semiconductor manufacturing heartland. Located in New Albany, Ohio, the site has been under continuous construction since 2022. Crews have worked more than 6.4 million hours to date performing work that includes installing underground pipes, pouring more than 200,000 cubic yards of concrete, completing the SUTs, subutility trenches, and starting on the office buildings. The scale is monumental. The upcoming campus will cover approximately 1,000 acres, accommodate up to eight semiconductor fabrication plants, and foster space for support operations and industry partners. The investment will help boost production to meet the surging demand for advanced semiconductors, powering a new generation of innovative 
made of products from Intel and serving the needs of Foundry customers. The initial phase of the project is expected to create 3,000 Intel jobs, 7,000 construction jobs over the course of the build, and support tens of thousands of additional local long-term jobs across a broad ecosystem of suppliers and partners. To support the development of the new site, Intel pledged an additional $100 million toward partnerships with educational institutions to build a pipeline of talent and bolster research programs in the region. When Intel Ohio 1 reaches full production, it won't just be manufacturing chips. It will prove that America can reverse decades of offshoring in the most strategically critical industry of the 21st century, establishing Central Ohio as a hub capable of competing with Taiwan and South Korea. Number 3. Cincinnati Convention District Cincinnati's compact downtown will undergo an $800 million transformation with the development of a first-class convention district. With construction beginning in July 2024, the convention district marquees will be a reimagined Duke Energy Convention Center connected to a brand new Marriott Headquarters Hotel and a new Elm Street Plaza. This isn't incremental renovation. It's Cincinnati's most aggressive bet that convention tourism can anchor downtown revitalization. The $264 million project, described by county leaders as long overdue, is set to be finished by the end of 2025. The updates aim to make the center more competitive with other major cities' convention facilities. Hamilton County Commissioner Denise Driehaus said, We weren't pulling in the conventions that we should with the city of our size. So, never mind the quantity of conventions that we were getting, but the quality of the conventions by way of numbers, we weren't attracting those conventions. But the convention center is only half the transformation. The new 700-room hotel will cost $536 million to build and will feature retail stores on the ground floor, multiple ballrooms, an outdoor terrace overlooking 5th Street, more than 62,000 square feet of meeting space, a 17,445-square-foot events terrace, and a sky bridge that connects to the convention center. Portman Holdings says preliminary site work on the hotel has already begun, and full construction is scheduled to start by the end of 2025. The Marriott is expected to be done by June 2028. Located east of the convention center and across Elm Street, a brand new two-acre park is also going through an upgrade. The plaza will feature an additional two acres of outdoor activation space extended from the renovated convention center. Great for receptions, parties, live music, and food trucks. Tourism supports more than 46,000 jobs in Hamilton County, and visitors contributed $229 million in local taxes last year. Visitors generated 25% of local business revenue in 2024, up 8% from the previous year. When Cincinnati's convention district opens, it won't just be a renovated facility. It will prove that mid-sized Midwestern cities can compete for national conventions, that downtown districts can be anchored by tourism infrastructure, and that Cincinnati's comeback extends beyond riverfront casinos into genuine economic transformation. Number 2. The Scioto Peninsula our 16-block urban plan, bounded by Starling Street, Bell Street, and the Scioto River, extends existing streets connecting to downtown Columbus and weaves them into a walkable grid. Office buildings facing Franklinton and apartment buildings overlooking the park wrap parking structures topped by accessible landscaped courtyards. For decades, the peninsula sat underutilized, a disconnect between downtown Columbus and the Scioto River, trapped behind museums and parking lots. Now it's being transformed into Columbus's first entirely new urban district in generations. Phase 2 of the peninsula features a 20-story tower with 300 apartment units, 150,000 square feet of office space, a second hotel to complement the newly completed Junto next door, a 40,000-square-foot Pins Mechanical Comart, and a signature grocery store. Construction on Phase 2 is scheduled to begin in late 2024 with a 2027 completion time frame. The first phase already delivered 550 residential units, 230,000 square feet of Class A office space, and the Hunto Boutique Hotel, proving market demand for urban density along Columbus's riverfront. But what makes Kyoto Peninsula transformative isn't just the buildings. 
It's the infrastructure. EMH&T completed master planning and design for the redevelopment, which included the reconstruction of 10 roadways totaling nearly two miles. The roadways were rebuilt with high-quality streetscape finishes, including granite curbing, paver crosswalks, and street trees. Green stormwater management solutions were also implemented, including permeable pavements and bioretention gardens. In February 2024, the Columbus Symphony Orchestra went public with its plan for a $275 million concert hall on the Scioto Peninsula, signaling that cultural institutions see the district as Columbus's emerging civic heart. Mayor Andrew Ginther declared, Phase two of the peninsula will be transformational in the continued development of this new urban district, furthering downtown as an economic anchor for the city. When Seattle Peninsula reaches full build-out, it won't just be another development. It will prove that Columbus can create genuine urbanism from scratch. That riverfront land doesn't have to be sacrificed to highways and parking and that mid-sized Midwestern cities can execute master plan districts rivaling anything on the coasts. Number one, New Huntington Bank Field. The Haslam Sports Group, HSG, and Cleveland Browns announced the selection of AECOM Hunt and Turner Construction Company as the construction managers for the New Huntington Bank Field, Ohio's first enclosed stadium. This visionary project will set a new standard in stadium innovation and fan engagement, bringing fans closer than ever to action on the field while attracting year-round events beyond football. This isn't just another stadium. It's a $2.4 billion declaration that Cleveland refuses to accept second-tier status, that the city that Art Modell abandoned in 1995 will finally have infrastructure rivaling any market in the NFL. Work officially began this week on the new Cleveland Brown Stadium in Brook Park. More than 6,000 construction jobs and thousands of additional full-time positions across the stadium and adjacent development have been created with this project. Once completed, Huntington Bank Field will be Ohio's first enclosed stadium. The new 67,500-seat Super Theater will also be able to host other large-scale events year-round, including NCAA Final Fours, international soccer matches, and concerts. But here's what makes this project genuinely transformative. It's not just a stadium. The mixed-use entertainment district surrounding the stadium will be developed across multiple phases and will ultimately include 300,000 square feet of retail, two upscale hotels, 1,100 apartments, and 500,000 square feet of office. Phase 1, which is planned to deliver along with the stadium in 2029, will include 450 hotel rooms, 575 apartments, 96,000 square feet of traditional retail, suited for unique food and beverage and shopping destinations, and 137,000 square feet of experiential retail. The financing model is equally ambitious. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine signed the state's $60 billion biannual operating budget, which includes a $600 million funding pool for the new stadium. The Browns will repay the state through tax revenue generated in the development over 16 years. HSG and their development partners stated that they will commit $2 billion in private capital toward the full mixed-use project. Brook Park is also slated to contribute $400 million in public funding. The design was unveiled in August 2024 and was created by HKS Architects. The site earmarked for the investment was formerly occupied by Ford's factories, where, among other things, the legendary V8 engines used in models such as the Mustang were manufactured. The design of the new stadium refers to the industrial character of the place. Its original architecture is intended to resemble a production plant. Enabling work for the new Huntington Bank field began on October 1st, with a formal groundbreaking scheduled for early 2026. This accelerated start underscores the momentum behind the project and the team's ability to mobilize quickly, keeping Huntington Bank field on track to open in 2029, along with phase one of the mixed-use development.
When Huntington Bank Field opens in Brook Park, it won't just be a dome protecting Cleveland's NFL team from Lake Erie winters. It will be proof that even cities burned by stadium betrayals can rebuild trust, that suburbs can become destinations when anchored by world-class infrastructure, and that Cleveland's resurgence extends beyond downtown into the industrial suburbs that once built America's cars and can now build its future. From the Brent Spence bottleneck finally being untangled to Intel's massive semiconductor campus anchoring America's chip independence, Ohio is proving that Rust Belt states can execute infrastructure at a scale that rivals coastal powerhouses. These five mega projects represent over $40 billion in investment, reshaping how Ohio competes in the 21st century economy. So which project impressed you most? The Companion Bridge ending 60 years of congestion, Intel's $28 billion fab establishing Central Ohio as Semiconductor Heartland, or Cleveland's audacious $2.4 billion dome stadium redefining what NFL infrastructure can be. Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the world's most ambitious mega projects. We'll see you next time.